Hello and welcome to yet another episode of the Atari Guy where I take you back to the past to play some, uh, well, I've already paraphrased the nerd enough times already, so what do you say we get moving on, huh? Anyway, I haven't done a comparison review in quite a while, and this time I have been looking forward to doing this one for a long time because it's one of my all-time favorite games from the arcade, and that is Parker Brothers Cubert. Yeah, for the 2600 and 5200. Well, I like to play the 2600 version first, so what do you say we pop that one in first, and then we pop in the 5200 version right here. Okay. And, oh, I apologize for the screen. I know it doesn't look perfect. Anyway, the rule of this game is pretty simple. I mean, all you have to do is avoid that snake ball. Anyway, what you gotta do is to basically turn all his, jump on these blue parts and turn them all yellow to complete the board. Just like that. See? It's pretty simple. Anyway, the next thing to do is to do the reverse, turning all these yellow parts blue, all the while avoiding the snake, Coily. Yeah, that's his name. How do I remember that, anyway? Why do I remember that? I know! I think I remembered it because there used to be a Cubert cartoon back in the early 1980s. No joke. There really was a Cubert cartoon to go along with Pac-Man and the Mario cartoon. I mean, Donkey Kong cartoon. It was part of Saturday Morning's Saturday Supercade, as I recall it. I think ABC actually ran it. Anyway, let's get back to the game. Yes. By jumping on one of these things, one of these slick discs, I think they're called, um, you can actually manage to avoid Coily here. I guess that wasn't a bad, I guess that wasn't a very good time to demonstrate. Yeah, here we go. Where's that fucking slick disc? There it is. Jump on one of these here slick discs to avoid Coily's attacks. And he ultimately commits suicide because he failed so badly in his mission to kill Hubert. <laughs> it's the most suicidal snake I've ever seen in my life. But you know what? Actually getting hit by something was pretty cool in this game. The reason why that was pretty cool was because Hubert swore every time he got hit. Oh yeah, and also you get this green ball that makes you invincible for about five seconds. And the board's yours. But like I said, what really makes Cubert so goddamn cool is that he swore every time he got hit. What could he possibly be saying anyway when he when he does get hit? Maybe he's saying something so dirty that it's no wonder it couldn't be written on the game itself. So we'll just have to imagine for ourselves what Cubert is saying every time he gets hit by Coily. Fuck! Oh, and you know what? There's also a difficulty switch here, which allows you to control the number of red balls that are on the screen. See? I had the difficulty switch set differently, which is why you didn't see those red balls earlier. Of course, I usually play it that way anyway, because it just makes the game a hell of a lot easier. Yeah, this game is awesome. Awesome to the max. Greatest game ever. Well, with the exception of Pac-Man or Space Invaders. But anyway, this game is pretty damn cool. Hubert be able to finish this level, or will he get hit again? I don't know. Even if he does get hit again, it's still gonna be awesome. Fuck! Yeah, that's what Hubert said when he got hit. He said fuck. In fact, I know he said fuck. He had to have. Why not? Wow, that's a lot of balls. This 
game sure has a lot of balls. Shit! Yeah. Alright, this is where it actually gets a little harder because you have to turn these blue tops from blue to yellow to green. Yeah, they got tricky on ya. Alright, here we go. Let's take care of this like so. Fuck! Trust me, this game is easier to play than it looks. Motherfucker. Anyway, that's Cubert for the 2600. Let's see, how can the 5200 do better again? Well, I don't know, we're gonna find out. I have a theory about games with better graphics. And that theory is that usually better games don't... Better graphics usually don't always make a better game. So here we go. Well, basically the graphics are a lot better. I mean, you can make out the fact that Cubert is standing on blocks. And that he has to turn the top of the blocks yellow. So it's very much the same standard game as you'd play on the 2600 or in the arcade. And there goes Coily. <laughs> Take that, you son of a bitch. Snaky bastard. I think I can understand Indiana Jones' fear of snakes now. Snakes. Why do there have to be snakes? All right. Just basically get this guy going like so. Maybe I should wait for him to come to me. There we go. Yeah. This game is just awesome. I have no complaints about this game at all, which kind of makes me wonder why I'm even reviewing it. Because usually I like to review a bad game because they're just a lot more fun to talk about. But this is a pretty good game, and just a damn fine puzzle game, if you will. I guess it is a puzzle game. I mean, you do have to make every part match. Get one of the slick discs. What were they called? Slick discs or slippy doos? I don't know. According to the cartoon, if I remember correctly, it was, uh... It was slippy dudes, but that just sounds really weird. Oh, fuckers! Like I said, whenever Cubert gets hit by something, he starts cursing worse than a frustrated gamer who's having a really bad day. Oh, cool, an extra life. Fuck! Ah! Well, the Lord giveth, the Lord taketh away, I suppose. Yeah, this game's awesome. Yeah. Well, basically, there it is. Cubert on both systems for the 5200 and 2600. Overall, as much as I like the 5200's gameplay, and it's still very good, and the arcade graphics are very realistic... I still gotta go with the 2600 version, simply because it's just a little bit more classic. And also, I get a hell of a lot farther in this game, and above all else, I can control the number of balls that I want on the screen. And also, the snake is le the snake is a little more forgiving on the 2600 version. Anyway, that's Cubert. Live long and keep playing on.